Greetings and God's peace be with you. My name is Christopher and I'm one of the priests at St. Francis Episcopal Parish and Community Center. I uh, am sharing today uh, the final in a series of four video reflections on the theme of recreation. The summer is a time where, at least I hope, many of us can take some time away um, to slow down and to rest, to be recreated by God, to be restored. I have been uh, speaking over these last few weeks about a special place for me, uh, a place at the Bishop Claggett's Camp and Conference Center that has been a place of refuge and healing. And I've just I've shared experiences um, that have uh, happened to me over many years uh, out at the outdoor chapel space that's there. And so uh, today I want to end this series reflection with one that happened just very recently when I was out there in June. Uh, and then I'll conclude with uh, a, a final poem from uh, John O'Donohue. So it was only probably uh, a little less than a month ago now that I was out at Claggett for the College for Congregational Development. And that week was um, a very intense week. It was an amazing week of training, an opportunity to learn from leaders around the country that are doing really important congregational development work. Um, I was really grateful to have a chance to learn with them and, uh, and to share and bring those resources back to our St. Francis community. Uh, also during that week, uh, the Franciscan order that I'm a part of was gathering for convocation. Now, the college was, um, was meeting in person out at Claggett, but the convocation was a virtual one. And I was given permission uh, to be able to attend just a small portion of the Franciscan convocation. And uh, so that was at the end of the week on that Friday. And the week had been uh, a week of intensity and, and learning um, of restoration and, uh, and rethinking things. But on that, uh, that day, uh, that early that Friday morning, I decided that I would start the morning in prayer and I got up um, just after dawn. It was raining pretty hard and I decided I would put my habit on and, um, and walk out and uh, go out to the, the outdoor chapel space that had been just such an important place for me. You've heard, if you've listened to the other videos, some, some encounters that I've had over the years there. Well, on this particular time, I went out and just, you know, I was feeling so grateful and was excited for the week and the learning and also excited for the day ahead. And I uh, just wanted to prepare and make myself available. And I went to the altar and prayed and I was, was singing and um, asking God just to be present with me and listening to the birds and feeling the rain. And uh, I, uh, you know, went down, um, as I told in the last video, I discovered years before that, um, that underneath the chapel space was a, um, was a doorway uh, and, a, and, a, and a portal into a space. Uh, it was called the, it's called St. Francis Church underneath of it. Uh, you can see a photo of that in what I submitted for today's uh, video. So, you know, I went to that space and, you know, I, um, the rain was coming down pretty hard and I, I put my hand, I rested my hand up on the, the rafter of the doorway and, uh, and I started to look into the space through the, the hole in the door that had been broken down and I wanted to look into that um, just to see what was there. I was a little bit creepy um, and as I put my hand on the, the, the lip I, I, um, I pulled back because I, I realized that I'd put my hand on a snake skin. Uh, there was a hole um, in the stone just above it and um, it was a little unnerving uh, but, but also beautiful and I moved pretty quickly from fear to curiosity and I was looking at the, the snake skin and I looked down on the door and I saw there was also um, uh, a cicada shell and I was just thinking about the ways that we shed our skin as we are called to grow, as we're called to become something more. Well, I, um, I gathered these things up and I also found an acorn and an old uh, oak leaf and I was just thinking about the transformation process and this change and the miracle that, um, that God is in creation. And I'd gathered these things up and I was going to head back so I could get ready for the day. And I was walking back up the hill and and I realized that I wasn't finished yet. So I put my treasures down up on the, the porch 
um, at the one of the the, um, the buildings there at Claggett, and I walked back down to the the chapel and and I looked back in through the doorway. I'd never been in through there before because the the hole itself was um, is not very large, and there were a lot of nails around it, and I I just felt this need to enter in to really. Um, to know what was inside and to experience a deepening of trust. Well, it was interesting because around the hole in the doorway were a bunch of rusty nails. It almost felt like the mouth of, of something and with these, these teeth on there, these rusty teeth. Well, I, I realized I couldn't get in there uh, with my habit on because the, 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 robes, uh, the robe would have gotten caught on it. So I had to pull that off and I thought to myself, what happens if I don't come out of this hole? Um, and then, you know, I thought, oh, well, all the things that I might be afraid of, there isn't really anything that I'm gonna encounter there that, um, that would um, be that dangerous. And yet I noticed the fear coming up in me, that primal fear that comes up, that, uh, that begs us to stop, um, to freeze. But I felt moved uh, to enter in and as I looked deeper into the hole and my eyes started to adjust the darkness, I could see a painted cross on one of the beams. So I pulled uh, myself in through the hole. I could reach up on um, a rusty beam and, and, uh, and lift myself into the space without hitting any of the nails. And as I put my feet down on the, the muddy floor of this, uh, it looked like an old root cellar. Um, there were bunches of beams stretched across every couple of feet that were holding the space together, um, horizontal and vertical beams. So in order to, um, to move into the space, I had to step over or go underneath each one of them. And I was feeling pretty vulnerable, pretty, um, pretty unnerved by the whole experience, but I still felt this desire to, to enter into that space and to enter into that darkness and to feel transformed. As I looked into the space, I wasn't so sure how far I could even go, um, but as my eyes adjusted to the darkness and, um, and I stepped over and under the different beams, I realized that at the very end of it, the two beams were actually placed together and they formed this cross. And I, I just felt like I needed to, to enter through that space, to pass through the cross. And I really wanted to be able to look back through the hard wood of it to see the light coming through the broken doorway. And so one after another I went through and there were probably six or seven obstacles that I had to climb over and each time the space got darker and it felt wetter and creepier and I could hear little things scampering and, um, and I could hear my breath and my heartbeat. And I tried to allow that to slow as I continued to pray and ask God to be with me, to bless this space, this time. And as I finally passed through the wood of that cross and looked back through, um, it was just amazing to see the whole room was filled actually with light, not because anything had changed in it, but I had. Uh, my ability to see in that space, to recognize what was there, to realize that what seemed like um, a veil of darkness, this barrier that I couldn't pass through, had actually been transformed. As I looked out, I could see the light and the growth, and I was ready to enter, uh, to step back through each of the, the obstacles, the hurdle, and to return uh, to whatever the day would bring. To return to the convocation with my Franciscan brothers, but also to return to the College for Congregational Development, to, to feel God renewing me, recreating me, and making me more whole. I know that's a pretty intense experience to share. It's one that I felt really blessed by, and, um, and I continue to wonder for you, how is God working in your life, and what are the places where God meets you? Maybe it's a beach, maybe it's the woods, maybe it's the mountains, maybe it's just a quiet place someplace that, that you go uh, to set aside, to slow down, and to feel God's presence with you. As we conclude the series, I want to share one final poem uh, from John O'Donohue from to bless the space between us. This one is called Entering Death. And I know that seems kind of ominous and scary, but um, 
The poem is beautiful, and so I share it with you. I pray that you will have the blessing of being consoled and sure about your death, and you know in your soul that there is no need to be afraid. When your time comes, may you have every blessing and strength you need. May there be a beautiful welcome for you in the home you are going to. You are not going somewhere strange, nearly back to the home you have never left. May you live with compassion and transfigure everything negative within you and about you. When you come to die, may it be after a long life. May you be tranquil among those who care for you. May your going be sheltered and your welcome assured. May your soul smile in the embrace of your Anamkara, your soul friend. Siblings in Christ, thanks for listening. Thanks for being a part of uh, the St. Francis community. I'm grateful to be able to share these um, these moments with you, and I hope that um, you have found something of peace and learning as you've listened. I know I have in the sharing. Christ's peace be with you, and I look forward to our next time together.